Hello, I'm Dr. John Cruz, and today I'm going to be talking about gamma oscillations. What the heck are they, and why would you want to know about them? So, the take home message is that gamma oscillations are brain waves in the high speed, high frequency region of brain waves and high gamma wave activity is correlated with better problem solving, memory, attention, sensory processing, mindfulness, and may there's already some preliminary attempts at using this through either neurofeedback to improve conditions like ADHD and or other approaches like meditation, dietary concerns, and down the road there may be medications that particularly target or help benefit gamma wave activity in the brain to help with ADHD. So, to back up and to t start talking a little bit more about brain waves. So, for not quite a century now, um, researchers have been looking at the electrical activity of the brain, measuring it using the EEG or electroencephalography where they stick various electrodes all over the brain and record activity. Now that activity that's being measured is the composite activity of billions of neurons firing, and if the neurons were just firing randomly, you'd see a messy blur of electrical activity. So it's only when neuron activity is coordinated, when different neurons, lots and lots and lots of them are highly synchronized that we see waveforms where we see waves of activity, waves of activation, deactivation, forming activity. And the frequency of those waves have been classified. Um, so many people are familiar with biofeedback approaches that taught people to chill out and uh, generate more alpha waves. Um, so so alpha waves are some of our slower waves. They're in the um, 9 to 4. So, so the measure of frequency is a hertz. It's a cycle a second. Alpha waves representing a relaxed brain are in the 9 to 14 hertz range. A little faster than that are beta waves in the 15 to, depending on who's measuring, 30 hertz cycle. Beta waves are characteristic of a brain that's strongly engaged in a task. Um, if you're familiar with stages of sleep or looking at sleep, delta waves are characteristic of deep sleep, that there's occasional bursts of delta waves. Those are only at a 1 to 4 hertz characteristic. And theta waves are also characteristic of active daydreaming when you're awake or shallower sleeping states. Um, in the 4 to 8 hertz range. For years, most of our attention was on the alpha, beta, gamma, or alpha, not gamma, alpha, beta, delta, 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 theta waves, and very little attention drawn to the faster waves, these gamma waves, partly because in most states of brain activity, almost all, not only are they faster, but they're also a much lower amplitude. They're smaller waves. They're sort of background. Something's going on, and you see bigger theta, delta, other waves flashing through. Um, so one summary, Scientific America, which usually does a pretty thorough job, it was an article 25 years ago, talked at length about alpha, beta, theta, delta waves, and didn't even mention the existence of gamma waves. Um, other people who are familiar with this, with, with brain waves, know that in 2013 the FDA did approve a EEG-based system for helping with ADHD diagnosis. So nobody, even the manufacturers, claim that this is a tool you can simply use for everyone and it will definitively tell you whether someone has ADHD. It's considered an adjunct to a good clinical evaluation. Um, but this FDA-approved um, system is using an EEG, brainwaves, collecting the brainwaves, analyzing them and comparing the theta to beta 
ratio to come up in a quantitative way with the likelihood of whether this is being generated by a brain with ADHD. Again, that's not definitive. So, the, again, the swifting to so the gamma waves um, are in small amplitude but very fast. So, so a couple of other things about the EEG. EEGs are really good. They have really high what we call spatial resolution. They are sampling things very quickly. Again, the gamma range of cycles is cycling at the range of, depending on who's talking, 30 to 80 cycles per second. So if you give a stimuli, you can see how brain cells are responding you know, in a very short time frame after that. With something like most functional MRI approaches or something like PET scan, the spatial resolution is on the order usually of a few seconds or even longer. So you can't tell how the brain is immediately responding to a given stimuli. Um, you can tell, again, that the average of what's going on over the course of seconds or minutes. On the other hand, some of those other techniques offer very high temp, um, did I say spatial? Temporal. I may have said that wrong previously. So EEG, very good temporal time resolution, very poor spatial resolution. So not only when someone's saying they're observing gamma waves or theta waves, it's important to know where in the brain that's happening. And with an MRI you, or a CT or some other PET scans, you can get down to a few centimeters smaller than centimeters, even a few millimeters of where dopamine activity or something else is occurring. With most EEG approaches, the spatial resolution is much poorer, so it's more like front of the brain, back of the brain. It's hard to know where these rapid events are actually occurring in the brain. Um, so back to gamma oscillations, so this synchronized activity in the gamma waves, um, a lot of attention has been focused on D4, which is a dopamine subset of dopamine receptors in parts of the cortex, and how the interneurons there seem to be the primary site for generating gamma waves in the brain, and gamma wave amplitude, again, has been correlated with better problem solving, better short-term memory, better attention span, greater mindfulness, and, and to a bodily health level, to greater gamma wave activity in the frontal part of the brain associated with better mood, better immune functioning. Um, and there have been some studies looking at dopamine for receptor agonist activators showing this boosting gamma oscillations in the front of the brain and correlations with boosting some mental performances in contrast. Um, so people have looked at gamma wave activity in ADHD and there's some variability, but what seems to be characteristic is lots of gamma wave activity posteriorly in the cortex and less gamma wave activity in the front cortex. Again, that would correlate with more problems with attention, more problems with um, cognitive processing of information. One of the things that the gamma oscillations seem particularly important for, and this is still preliminary and still not completely nailed down, is what's called sensory binding. So in the brain, and visual processing has probably been the most studied, the one the eyes, the retinas, the photosensors take in information and then it's shunted back into the brain, but that visual information is shunted into um, color goes one place, size, shape, intensity go in other places. If you're looking at an object and perceiving both sound and visual and tactile and olfactory sensations so that all those different senses are processed in different parts of the brain but we combine them all, we bind them all to a coherent whole and it's thought that good effective gamma wave activity or what gamma wave activity is doing is synchronizing 
information from different parts of the brain and allowing the brain to patch it together to reconstitute a process or an imaging or a perception so we have a unified perception and aren't relegating the sound as a separate dimension from or a separate unconnected aspect of the object we're perceiving. I'm not explaining that very well. Um, so getting back to the gamma waves and ADHD, um, there have been some studies looking at what do our traditional stimulants do. There's some other studies looking at novel agents that are D4, dopamine 4 receptor acting agents. Um, and these seem to be helping boost gamma activity in the frontal cortex, which would be good and correlated with better performance. So I think in years ahead, we will increasingly see one um, biofeedback EEG training that are specifically training gamma activity. Again, most of it so far has been looking at things like theta to beta wave ratios and trying to preferentially um, alter those ratios of brain activity, but I think we'll be increasingly see things that, that target gamma waves. We are already, you know, people have been developing for more than a decade specific dopamine 4 receptor agents that hopefully will help with EHD. Um, one of the downsides of our more broadly affecting dopamine agents is that they have a host of other side effects, including addictive potential and including psychotic, causing psychosis potential, which seem to be less of a risk with the D4 agents. Um, and we know that certain meditative practices enhance gamma oscillation activity and the mental states, the better cognition, better memory that are at least correlated with that. And there's even been some work already on dietary influences that, for example, nuts in general are pretty good at boosting gamma oscillations in the brain, and um, pistachios are the nuts most potent at doing that. And that's one preliminary study that's been done. So more and more as we understand how the brain is processing, again, I think we'll be focusing less on drugs that are affecting neurochemical systems diversely throughout the brain and the body and hopefully developing more targeted systems both medication-wise and non-medication-wise that are maybe more directly tied to function and boosting gamma oscillations would be one of them. Um, one other side note is that gamma waves, gamma oscillations have nothing to do with gamma rays. And gamma rays are a form of breakdown radiation. Um, high frequency waves that, that beyond x-ray waves that penetrate deeply and can do lots of tissue damage. So gamma wave or gamma radiation has nothing to do with gamma oscillations. That's about all I have to say for today. Um, again, hopefully there will be more on this topic in the future and maybe I can explain it more coherently as we learn more and have a more cohesive body of work. Um, what I'll be talking about in two weeks is the gut biome. I'm not seeing any questions right now, so I will just be signing off. <laughs>